Previously on Wild Cards. Hey, what's the situation? Hi. Name? Max Mitchell. Used to work with them, but for some reason got transferred to Sea Patrol. It's called Maritime Unit. You're gonna stay on the case. Thank you, ma'am. Both of you. What? what? Ma'am, you can't be serious. She's a thief and a, and a con artist. Meet my dad, George Graham. Who's that? That's my butler. What? Oh, you that's funny? I don't see you helping. Maritime unit. It's not a sea lion, it's a fender. You sure? You want to come down here and pet it, be my guest. Bonjour! Ahoy, partner! Whose boat is that? The director of the Milan Dance Company. Why are you still here? Chief Lee called us in. What? Damn it. Okay, I'll meet you down there. Absolutely not. This is our first official shift together. Okay, we need to project the united front. You think Paul and Oates walk on stage separately? No. I'll meet you back on the shore. Fine. Look, buying them donuts isn't gonna make them like you, all right? What are you wearing? I Googled what a detective would wear for her first day of work, and after three pages of sexy Halloween costumes, I got this. You're not a detective. You're a criminal consultant. That was a surgical consultant? Did you call me a doctor? This isn't a joke, OK? This is my life we're talking about. Of course. I need to get off that boat and back to being a full-time detective, and you need to stay out of prison. The best way we do that is to keep our heads down and do as we're told. Think you can handle that? Absolutely. Great. Good day. It's an honor to be working alongside the brave officers of the Metro PD. I hope I do you all proud. And I bring donuts. Donuts. I love donuts. Sucker. Cash for fries with honey. Honey. Simmons, you're a maple glaze all the way. Feels so seen. Cooler. Sweet, but twisted. Need I say more? So Lee wasn't kidding. Criminals are doing our jobs now. It's only two month trial. Stand down. What are you doing? Saving the best for last. You, apple fritter. It's a maverick, because it's not really a donut. It has a bit of health, because the apples. It's a work hard, play hard, tree to the pastry world. Since the commissioner has consecrated this unholy union between the two of you, I have to give you something to do. Ooh, let me guess. The daughter of a Colombian diplomat was kidnapped, and we have 24 hours to get her back. Or an armed robbery by a ruthless crew of her one last score. OK, if you don't cut her off, she'll just keep going. It's a case you two are perfectly suited for. I'm here today to talk to you about Porch Pirate. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, thieves who steal packages left outside doors or in hallways. Um, what, uh, what, what can we do? Um, retrieve packages as quickly as possible. Are you just leaving your packages out waiting to be stolen? That's probably a big part of why they're getting stolen. All right, right. Um, let's give it up for Detective Ellis. OK, you want to catch a thief, you offer a reward. Anything over $1,000 will get her done. Questions? There's a ghost in my neighbor's condo. Well, that's more of a statement, but I'm super into it. Absolutely not. He moved in a few months ago. Some kind of big time sports agent. He's in the middle of a bitter divorce and bought a fancy new sports car last month. Bonnie, you have all the tea. Not much else to do when you're retired. Come on, you're still a little spitfire. OK, about the ghosts. Listen for yourself. When was the last time you saw your neighbor, Bonnie? A few days ago, maybe. All right, Bonnie, look, I'll call down to the concierge. We'll do a wellness check. No need. And we're in. Max, cops can't just. I'm not a cop. OK, wait. Ma'am, stay here. Police, anybody home? Max, stay behind me.
I'm done with the bedroom walkthrough. Windows are locked, but check it for latents anyway, OK? Hey, I'm trying to get a line on the ex-wife right now. OK. Oh, it's the chief. Hey, I'm guessing you heard? I send you for community outreach, and you turn it into a homicide? Well, we didn't kill him. I'm sending in Simmons and Yates. No, I'm already here. Just let me see it through. Let us see it through. This was never the plan. Look, we were the first ones on the scene, OK? I had to secure it and start collecting evidence. We mess with chain of custody on a homicide. The defense is going to toss everything out. You know that. You do things by the book, Ellis. No big swings trying to prove something. Yes, sir. OK, what do we got? Victim died of multiple stab wounds. I put the time of death in the last 12 hours, somewhere between 10 PM and midnight. There's a knife missing from the knife block in the kitchen. Could be the murder weapon. He's also got a black eye sustained hours pre-mortem. So someone punched him in the face and then hours later stabbed him to death? Rough night. Victim's name is Jake Boshep, 40. Look at this. Why is she touching things? Don't touch that. Someone smashed his Sports Agent of the Year award. Maybe his competition got jealous. We only know what the scene tells us. No forced entry, nothing was stolen. Injury suggests this was personal. So you think the vacuum did it? Very funny. It's not much personal stuff in here. <sighs> Maybe his car will tell a different story. But insurance doesn't cover that. Hey. Hey, what are you guys doing? I'm Detective Ellis. Is this Jake Boshep's car? Yeah. You heard what happened. It's terrible. We're going to need to take a look at the footage from your security cameras. There isn't any. Uh, system reboots, the first of every month. Happened just last night, wiped it clean. That's convenient. Happens automatically. It's free up space on the server. All right, well, I'm still going to need to take a look at your hard drives then. Sure. Where were you last night? Uh, I work day shift, so after work, I uh, watched the game at a bar with my friends, stayed there to closing. Oh, yeah? What was the final score? 114 and 95. Watch out. You want to mess with those shoes. Parking receipts, some dry clean shirts still in the plastic, and there's some cash in the front console. So not a robbery. This was personal. I wonder who hated Jake enough to smash up his car, give him a shiner, and stab him to death. Did you ever see anybody with Jake? No. Guy, all he did was work. It's barely ever here. Well, Jake's whole life was his work. You should probably start there. All right, now, this is the way we do things around here, okay? So just pay attention and follow my lead. You got it? You got it. Hi, I'm Detective Ellis. Jake's assistant, right? You poor thing. They sent me to help out. Tissue? Thank you. Do you need a hug? Help? Want a vent? Okay, you need to choose, okay? I'm an emotional buffet. Come here. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'm Detective Ellis. I'm here to speak with Bill Flair. That's me. Pleasure to meet you, Detective. I'm uh, Dr. Melvin Tadlock. I just came to give my condolences. Huh? Did you know Mr. Basha? Only indirectly. Some of his clients were my patients. Oh. I'll leave you two alone. We'll be in touch. Sure. I got a few questions for you, Mr. Flair. Yeah, uh, I got a meeting in about 15 minutes. I'll be brief. It's her title fight tomorrow night. We are about to make her the biggest name in sports. What can you tell me about Jake? This whole thing is unbelievable. He started on my desk as my assistant about 10 years ago, and last year he was my top agent. Anybody that might have been jealous of that kind of success? You don't make it to the top without throwing a few elbows, but no, everybody loved Jake. He pissed a lot of people off. He was ruthless and, and demanding and it made him a great agent, but not a very nice person. I mean, I got shoelaces for Christmas last year. Shoelaces? Did you notice anything different about him lately? No, he was a machine. He was a consummate closer. He was the most organized, efficient guy I have ever met. These last few days, he was just a mess, you know? How messy? On a scale of like one to Vanderpump rules. Oh, like Real Housewives of Jersey. Almost like a nine. Canceling all his meetings and being all emotional and all over the place. Oh my god, this phone won't stop ringing. Okay, you want? Know you go take a moment. Right now, you need time for you. I'll cover. Really? You go. Record any messages you get to the call log, girl. They call me Queen of the Logs. Ew. Jake was a okay. 
great agent. Rest in peace. But I am here for you now. We'll talk. Next call. Next call. We're not going to lose any clients today. I told you to follow my lead, Max. Okay, don't do that again. Cross my heart. Yeah, you keep saying that, and then... What? And Simmons. Jake's ex-wife's got a rock-solid alibi. She's been at a wellness center all week. They're applying for a warrant to get his financials, so we should have that shortly. Well, maybe. We'll have better luck with this. Jake's client list and call logs. Jake made 23 calls to Summer Lake the day he died. That's their big MMA client. Yeah. Okay. That's a pretty good lead. Oh, yeah. Wow. She's got 23 million followers. If that girl wins her next fight, she'll break the record for most championship wins. Summer Lake? Hi. I'm Detective Ellis. This is Max. Mind if we talk for a minute? Hey, no stress. You're not in any trouble. I just need to sit. It's just nerves. You guys are here about Jake? Yeah. We're sorry for your loss. Yeah. He was really good to me. Jake called you 23 times the day he died. Do you know why? I assume he was calling to talk about the deal. What deal? video game. No one knows about it yet. We're going to announce it tomorrow at the fight. I'm going to be the first female MMA fighter to have my own game. Wow, look at you. I know, I still can't believe it. I'm Growing up, every minute I wasn't training, I was playing MMA games, pretending to be them. And now kids are going to be pretending they're you. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Why didn't you pick up any of Jake's calls? I was on a flight back from Norway. I took a pill because I hate to fly, but by the time we landed, he was... Oh, damn. Uh... Hi. Yeah, I know. Okay, I will. Yeah, I got it. Is there a problem? Dr. Tadlock. He saw my Insta post about me being here. Right, I met him at your agency. He's your doctor, right? I'm supposed to rest before the match, in case I hurt myself before the big deal is signed. I just came here to blow off some steam, but I guess I should go. Thank you for your time. Being on a plane's a pretty damn good alibi. I started following all of Jake's clients. Summer posted a sweet message for Jake. It's raining in my heart, tear emoji. All his top clients posted a hashtag RIP Jake message. All except for one, Curtis Moorefield. Kurt Moe. The power forward? And guess who was Jake's last call before he died? Curtis Moorefield, free agent this year. And that's his wife, Candace. They're gonna make it rain in this house. And see her? She's the agent that's scooping up all of Jake's clients. Curtis will take questions about his free agency only, please. Yes. Kurt, Kurt, who's your top team you want to side with? That's a tough one, you know. We had the Timberwolves. They're really good contenders for the NBA Finals this year, but you know, we'll have to see. Still in negotiations. Do you trust me? Not really. Max. Sophia Yak from Horse and Hound here. Curtis, did you know Jake was having an affair with your wife? What? Is that why you killed him? <laughs> no comment. We have no comment. What was that, Max? I saw Curtis's wife curling a straw wrapper around her finger into a spiral. And? I found the same wrapper at the murder scene. That's her tell. That's a leap. What else would she be doing at her husband's agent's condo? OK, well, do you have it? Maybe I can get forensics to lift a print off of it. Oh. You guys have so many rules. That's great. Look, I told you to follow my lead. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to get her to admit it. We're gonna sue you, the city, and the whole police department. That was on me, I apologize. I could've handled that better. I see you dropped the phony accent. Who the hell are you? She's a consultant. Special investigator. We found this wrapper at Jake's condo. The prints are all over it. You see, at the moment, Candace, you're the only person we can place at the scene of the crime. I get it. Curtis is away all the time. 
He doesn't give you as much attention as he used to. And there's Jake. He notices your fabulous manicure when you cut your hair. There's no judgment here. You're in a safe space. Marriage is hard. It's such a stupid thing to do. Sometimes all it takes is one kind word to make you realize you feel alone. Jake was intense and overbearing, but he could be very charming and thoughtful too. Sounds like a toxic cocktail. Been there, dumped that. How did Curtis find out about the affair? Jake called him. He said he wanted to come clean. I begged him not to. Do you think Curtis could have killed Jake? That afternoon he called me, he said he had something to go off his chest. Jake told you he was sleeping with your wife. Why would he do that? I don't know. It sounded like he was in a confession or 12 step or something. And what do I care about him making amends? The dude was supposed to have my back. And that's when you took your revenge. On his car. I smashed it and then I left. I swear. Talk to us about those kicks. <sighs> Special edition Curtis Moorfield sneakers. They're nice, man. Oh, wait. They don't go on sale till next week, though. Even then, they're at least 10 grand. That's a lot on a concierge salary. I, uh, sold some stocks. Or maybe you erased the surveillance footage of Curtis smashing Jake's car. In exchange, he gave you those sweet sneakers. I never met the guy. So who gave you the shoes? I was protecting the agency's investment. If that video of Curtis trashing the car got out, that's $150 million down the drain. Yeah, were you wiping those videos or raised our only chance of catching a killer? I had one job, clean up Curtis's mess. So I did. So I'm assuming you both have alibis for the night of the murder then? I have a hundred of them. I took Curtis for a drink afterwards to calm him down. Well, their alibis all check out. They were at a cocktail bar from 8 p.m. till closing. So we figured out who trashed Jake's car, but not who killed him. You know, we got a hundred crazy reporters outside, and why, a, a cheating wife? We're working on the case, all right? You know, you were dangerous enough on your own, but with this one, I'd be surprised if this building's still standing in a week. Yay, Simmons, get back to work. Yeah, get back to work. <laughs> and you too. I said no big swings, and what do you do? Swung big. We're looking at these parking receipts, see if we can't track some of Jake's movements. You better find something solid. Yes, sir. Right. Mr. Flair, you strong arm any more of my clients, we'll sue. Start being straight with me. Stop covering your ass. Everybody loved Jake. Really? Somebody hated him enough to stab him multiple times. You want me to ease off your clients? Give me something I can use. Jake didn't even rep her anymore. Who? Haley Chen Lin, his former client, his current whack job. But you didn't hear it from me. What are you doing down there? Haley Chen Lin works at a track over on Barard. Barard. Barard, Barard. There. I got a receipt that says you parked there yesterday. Let's go. Haley Chen Lin, equestrian prodigy headed to the Olympics at age 16. It's a pretty prim and proper sport. Not always. Haley was banned for going after a judge with a riding crop. Okay, so she had a violent temper. Or just teenage hormones and too tight of a braid. What, your teenage years were a cakewalk? My dad was a cop. Nothing in my house was a cakewalk. Your dad was a cop? That explains so much. You want to hear my life story? Not really. It's a long story? I'll make it short. My mom and dad were in business together. Both your parents were con artists? You say potato. Well, I know where your dad is. What about your mom? We... But it heads all the time. She was a lot like me. Was? She died in a car crash when I was a teenager. So, no cakewalk here either. It's, uh, it's just up ahead here. Let's do it to it. from the Kentucky Derby. 
I wonder what brought Jake back here after all these years. There she is. That's her. Haley, I'm Detective Ellis. Are you here because I punched Jake in the face? You gave him that black eye? He showed up yesterday. I haven't heard from him in forever, and he wants to all, like, make up and apologize. Yeah, I gave him a black eye. Did that prick press charges? You really don't know. Know what? Jake is dead. He was murdered. What? No, he... He's dead? I'm so sorry. must have meant a lot to you. I hated him. What is that? After my parents started blowing through my earnings, Jake was the one who helped me emancipate myself. He stood up for me. So you liked him? Until he dropped me. So you hated him? It's complicated, but that's the best thing that ever happened to me. I find that hard to believe. Everything's very proper and conservative in the equestrian world. You gotta act a certain way, look a certain way. That was never me. Here I get to be loud, I get to be rough, and I get to be queer. You're living on your own terms. Which is why when Jake showed up, I told him to shove his apology and I let him have it. With this knife. What? No, that's, that's not mine. Max, step away from her. Haley Chen Lin, you're under arrest for the murder of Jake Boschev. I, I didn't kill Jan's him. behind your back. I didn't kill him. She didn't even know he was I, dead. It's not up for discussion. Come on, let's go. There's no way she did it. You don't know that. Yes, I do. And that wrinkle in your brow tells me that you're just as doubtful as I am. We have to go with the facts here, Max. That's such a cop-out. No, pun intended. Do you really think she would leave the murder weapon in the back of her truck? I think someone wanted us to find it. The point is, we did find it. It's out of our hands. Just got off the phone with the prosecutor. They have more than enough to lay charges. She didn't do it. Stop saying that. I can feel it in my gut. Haley has a history of violent behavior. She had motive, she confessed to assaulting him, and then there's the slam dunk of the murder weapon. He doesn't believe she's guilty either. I, I didn't say that. Don't back down, tell her. Stop, just stop. Let me remind you that closing this case gets you one step closer to you getting back on the squad and keeping your ass out of prison. Got it? What? Nothing. You're not a cop. I don't know why I keep expecting you to understand. You make that sound like it's a bad thing. Motive? Evidence. That's how this job works, okay? The law doesn't care about how you feel or what's right. It's about what you can prove. And look, I'll be the first to tell you, it's not perfect, but it's what we got. He's right. It's time to move on. So it's almost like the victim, Jake, was on some kind of apology tour. Mm. Sounds to me like a dying man trying to make amends. It's a shame you couldn't make it in here, honey. The guard brought in some gabagool just for you. I'm not hungry tonight anyway. Do you know what I had to do to get this in here? We got the wrong person, Dad. I can feel it. So get the right person. Trust your gut and you'll never go wrong. It's not that easy. Procedure, protocols, chain of evidence. Ranellis is a by-the-book kind of guy. You know our code. Screw the rich, but don't steal from the poor. And if someone needs a hand up, we give it to them. Do you remember that oil well scam we pulled down south? I'll never forget it. That whole deal almost blew up in our faces, literally. So many times I wanted to bail, but you were a stubborn little bugger. And you said, there's always a path through as long as we stay in the game. OK, I'll call you for advice and all you do is throw my own words back at me. Hey, that's what fathers are for. So then Lee says, case closed, Ellis. Take the win. I should just leave it and walk away, right? Oh, of course I'm not happy with that. The knife was in her bag, and the bag was in plain sight. Anybody could have access to it. If I stir things up and then I'm wrong, they're never going to let me back on the squad again. Jake, Jake, Jake. What the hell's going on with you? 
Simmons said your ex-wife was at a wellness retreat all week. Untraceable, just like you asked for? I turn the volume up and program the number into my phone. Please. Already all over at Buttercup. There he is. Be safe. Whose house is this? Do you really want to know? Probably not. What are you doing here? I was wondering if you were up for catching the real killer. Uh, is Billy Idol up for dancing with himself? Is Sweetwood Mac up for going their own way? OK, just, is... just get in the car, would you? Jake's ex-wife's been alibied. She doesn't have to talk to us. According to the call log I swiped, Jake had a long talk with her the night before he died. And for that, they hadn't spoken in months. Maybe she knows something about what was going on with Jake. They're in the middle of a divorce. What would they be talking about? Another Phone apology. sex. Phone sex? He's in the middle of a crisis. It's late at night. She's lathered up in eucalyptus oils with hints of musk and cedar. We've all been there. It's either that or a butt trial. Oh, my God. You're very tight in the lower back and hips. That means husband tension. Oh, that's incredible that you know that just from touching me. It is, although my hands can only tell so much. To release the pain, you need to talk about it. I'm in the middle of a divorce, or I was. My husband just died. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry. Did you two make up before he died? We were miserable. All he did was work. Then he called me the night before he died. We talked and talked, and he apologized. Oh, he was so sweet. And then a little sexy time? Oh, maybe a little. You know, I even thought that we maybe had a chance. And then he died. You know, I did three hours of scream therapy that day. Oh, you want to hear the worst part? Wild horses couldn't drag me away. On the day he died, Jake transferred two hundred and fifty thousand dollars out of her account into another woman's. Was her name Sylvia? I hate Sylvia's. No. They never tell. Oh, oh, yeah, right there. Go deeper. Oh, oh. her name was Katrina Westdale. Okay, thank you. Jake's financials just came through. Two hundred and fifty k left his bank account the morning he died. Katrina Westdale? Uh, yes. Hi, I'm Detective Ellis. This is Max. We're here to speak to you about the money you received from Jake Boship. Actually, that's for my husband, Danny. Well, we'll need to speak to him as well, then. Uh, I'm afraid that that's not possible. Danny's dead. It happened three years ago. He took a hit to the chest during a game. He never got up. Everybody just forgot about us. I mean, we're the sad story that nobody wants to think about. Years go by, and I'm not a football wife anymore. Just a single mom working two jobs. I was about to sell my house. And then yesterday, I got Jake's transfer. $250,000. And then what just said for Danny. It's a pretty life-changing amount of money. You know why he sent it? Is there any way he'd feel responsible for Danny's death? No, it was a freak accident. The doctor gave him a clean bill of health right before the game. What did the autopsy say? Danny had a heart condition, something called HCM, which apparently is very common, but we had no idea. One day he was about to sign a $15 million contract. And the next day he was dead. There's no way 250K wasn't an apology for something. Gas station carnations, if you ask me. Too little, too late. But why now? Danny died three years ago. It's not like a dead guy killed Jake, right? So it just puts us right back at square one. No one was put on this earth for only one thing. Amen. Is that blood? Oh, chili bean sauce, my bad. OK, come on, let's focus, all right? By all accounts, Jake was not a good guy. But then he apologizes to Curtis for sleeping with his wife. And then he apologizes to Haley for screwing her over all these years. And then to his ex for being a grand douchebag. It's like three days ago, he just suddenly grew a conscience. And yet, that's what got Jake killed. I wonder what triggered Jake's transformation. I mean, you need to speak with someone who spent more time with Jake than his boss, his clients, or even his ex-wife. Oh, put me in, coach. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. 
double shot, extra sugar. My angel. Where have you been? Ugh, we met Ogre in HR. Camille? Oh my god, she's the worst. The worst. Flat Earther. No. Where is everybody? Oh, they're at the big MMA fight today. Ugh, it's such a shame that Jake. You know, yesterday you said he was acting all weird lately. Emotional. What do you think was going on with him? You ask a lot of questions. Sorry, I think I'm just nervous. I mean, what if a serial killer is stalking this agency? I could be next. You could be next. Look at you. You're incredibly beautiful. You got charisma oozing out of your larger pores. Is that all for Jake? Yeah, Mr. Flair said all of Jake's mail is supposed to go directly to him now, so. Not the other shark, Mackenzie? No, straight to Mr. Flair. He was very clear about that. Let me take it into his office. You just enjoy that coffee. Sounds to me like a dying man making amends. Summer. Hi. Should we talk for a second? Not now. Come find me after I make history. You remember Dr. Slaney? Jake took you to see him a couple weeks ago. Of course. Can this wait? There is a problem with your tests. I don't understand. Dr. Tadlock said I was fine. Did Jake ever tell you why he wanted you to go see a cardiologist? Yeah, he said it was a uh, second opinion. Insurance reasons. It was no big deal. What's going on? Your ECG shows a thickening of your cardiac muscle. Basically, your heart can't pump the way it should. It explains your fatigue and shortness of breath. The doctor told me that was because of anxiety. No. Summer, you have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's also called HCM, and it can lead to sudden heart failure from overexertion. I can still fight. HCM is serious, Summer. Athletes have died from it. Yeah, but... That can't happen to me, right? If you're my daughter, I would never let you set foot in a ring again. Hey, people. I'm Tamara Jones, head of PR for the fight. I don't remember any. I don't usually work in the field, but I've been writing a desk and brand integration for years, and ever since my divorce, FY, best thing I ever did. My regional manager, Ken, he says to me, he says, Tam, why don't you get out in the field where you can meet people? He thinks it'll help with my anger management issues. I don't care. Anywho, thrilled to be here, launching Summer's new video game. I need Summer's team mic'd up ASAP. I'm Bill Flair, I'm her agent, I'll be announcing the game launch. I love it. Are you colorblind? What? No. Right. See these lights? Red means the mic's off. Green means it's on. Are you going to be speaking too? i uh, just here to cheer on Summer. Amazeballs. OK, so when I give you guys a cue, you're going to get into the ring, do your thing. And then we're going to give the people what they came for, blood and broken bones. Sounds good? Sure. Great. I think we're just waiting on the insurance rep to go over Summer's cardiology results, and then we're good to go. No, there, there must be some mistake. Red means the mic's off, green means it's on. We submitted our test results weeks ago. I was told new results came in. Ordered by someone named Jake Boship. Yeah, there are no new test results, so you can just go ahead. Great. You guys are so easy. OK, I need your camera ready in five. We need to talk. Something off? Jake ordered a second set of tests? I didn't know until a couple of days ago. No, if they, if they compare the results to mine, they'll know I faked the tests. Don't worry about it. Took care of it. Oh, we can't keep doing this. <laughs> we did it once before with that football player. He died. Tadlock, this is a video game deal. Do you understand? It's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So she just needs to sign the contract, get through this fight, and then we'll tell her the truth, and that'll be it. Right, you'll get your cut. No, 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 if they know that I faked the test, then, then my career is over. With this amount of money, you won't need a career. What did you do, Bill? I was protecting you. What did you do? I did what I had to do! I killed the bastard, okay? He was gonna expose us, so you keep your mouth shut! Take the win. 
I did what I had to do. I killed the bastard, okay? He was gonna expose us. So you keep your mouth shut. What the hell is that? Red off, green on. I switched the wires. Bill Flair, Melvin Tadlock, you're under arrest. Put your hands behind your back. Take them away, guys. Con 101. Put pressure on the marks and watch the bad decisions roll. We caught the bad guys, okay? You can smile now. Ladies and gentlemen, and now for the main event! Well, that wasn't part of the plan. No, it wasn't. Summer. Summer, what are you doing? This is who I am. It's all I've ever been. Stop her. What do you want me to do? Arrest her? I can't. She's not doing anything illegal. She wants to fight. It's her own choice. Summer's looking as good as ever, exactly as we've come to expect. I don't think there's a fighter out there who can beat me. Right, Summer, work that jab. She looks strong. Maybe she'll be okay. is way ahead on points. It's early, but I don't see this going on for much longer. Whoa, a back kick sends Summer reeling. It doesn't look like it was that hard of a shot, but I've never seen her look like this. The champ shakes it off. And now she is back in control. It looks like we are about to witness history tonight. End of the round, that was a great shot. Summer, please, stop this. Millions of people are watching. Girls that look up to you. I can win this. Yeah, or you could die. Summer, listen to me. No one was put on this earth for only one thing. You got your whole life out of you. I don't know what's happening, but Summer has gone to talk to the ref. This is a shocking turn. Summer Lake, on the cusp of breaking the record for most championship wins, has conceded the fight. Why would she walk away like this? A few minutes before the fight, I was told I have a heart condition that can be fatal from even a single blow. That must be really hard. How do you feel about that? Uh, walking away from the only thing I've ever known has been tough. But somebody I know has reminded me that no one was put on this earth for just one thing. Haley Chen Lin has been released, and Flair is finally starting to talk. How'd he catch on about Jake? Jake actually came to him. Said he'd seen how winded Summer was lately. That it reminded him of the football player's same symptoms. So Jake ordered the extra tests. When he figured out what they were doing, triggered his apology to her. He realized he valued cash over his clients. Oh, and Flair admits to planting the knife. Nice work, both of you. You hear that? He said both. OK, don't press, press your luck. luck. Duly noted. All right, I got somewhere to be. Later, dudes. Hello? Hello, Spitfire. Howdy. 
did you know? Just like you asked for. Turn the volume up and program the number into my phone. Please. Already all over it, Buttercup. One day I saw a package in front of my neighbor's door and I just took it. But it was exciting and dangerous. Like sex on the back of a motorcycle. Or so I've heard. I hated feeling like I was one hit replacement away from afternoon bingo and reruns of murder she wrote. A, Angela Lansbury is a legend and B, you still got gas in that tank. Can I have a minute to run a comb through my hair? Put a mug shot? You're no criminal, Bonnie. You're just a sassy broad who wanted to feel alive. You're letting me off? But I am returning those packages to your neighbors. You're collecting the reward. The victor goes to spoils. If we pin this on Lou Granway in 4F, we could split the money. Don't push it, Bonnie. Oh, fancy meeting you here. You just happen to be passing by the end of the dock? Okay, I'll admit it. I'm curious. Curious about what, Max? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, Ellis. Okay, if you couldn't be a cop, what would you be? Nothing. That's it? Yeah, my dad raised me to be a cop. That's who I am. <laughs> What about you? Maybe I'd be a nuclear physicist, or I'd advise the royal family. Ooh, or maybe I'd be a Trappist nun. You've thought a lot about this, haven't you? Yeah. I know you're right. I guess we're just two apples that didn't fall far from our trees. Mark says we need a theme song. Oh, God. OK, wait. Hear me out. It's got to be gritty, like The Sopranos. Or be something a little more fun, like Dukes of Hazard. Or it could be silent. Like, silence. He's got a cat. She's got style. He's got a frown. She's got a smile. <laughs> Mark likes it. No, he doesn't. You hear that? <laughs> this is my favorite song. Just this. 